A living will is designed to help you dictate the type of medical care you would get in the future if you couldn't speak for yourself. Now that sounds kind of handy, right? Eh, I can't remember any time that a living will has actually changed the medical care that someone received. How is that possible? Well, to answer that, we're gonna dive into the specifics of a living will. What it is, what it's designed to do, and what it actually does in real medical situations. I'm gonna wrap this up then by offering you some better alternatives to the living will. All right, let's do this. So a living will is an advanced directive. It is a legal document that you complete yourself that allows you to tell your doctors what type of medical care you would or would not want done to you in some sort of future scenario where you've got a terminal or incurable illness, and B, you can't tell the doctors what to do in that exact situation in the future. Now, the intentions of the living will are, are threefold. One, to give you autonomy, right? To give you control over the health care you get, even if you can't speak for yourself. Two, to unburden your loved ones or whoever would be making decisions for you by having your wishes clearly written to give them peace of mind that they're acting according to the way that you would want to be treated. And three, just delivering on giving you peace of mind by having a clear plan for the future in place. Now, does the living will actually deliver on these promises? Mm, not so much. You're probably wondering, how is it possible that by writing your wishes in advance, that doesn't do anything? How can that not change the medical care that you get? Let me answer that by painting you an example scenario of 60 year old man who has just been diagnosed with stage four metastatic lung cancer. His oncologist has given him one, maybe two years to live. So hearing that prognosis, he jumps into getting his affairs in order, including doing a living will. Because this guy knows in the future when the cancer treatment isn't working anymore and he's near the end of his life, he would wanna focus on his comfort and he would definitely not want to prolong his life on machines when he gets one, two years down the road from now. So he does the living will. Flash forward two years, and he's, he's still alive and kicking, and he's, he's doing okay, but slowing down. Suddenly he comes down with a nasty, nasty pneumonia. He's rushed to the hospital, he's in respiratory distress, he's, he's too sick to talk to the doctors because he's, he's delirious at this point. And the docs are looking at this guy thinking, if we don't put him on life support, if we don't intubate him and use a ventilator to breathe for him, he's probably gonna die within the next hour. Remember, he has a living will, and it says if he's got a terminal illness, he's at the end of his life, he would not want machines to keep him alive. Here's the twist. This guy's got family all over the country, family whom he's very close with and keeps in regular contact with and they're getting the call that this guy's in the hospital and doing very badly, and they want to be at his side. They want to be holding his hand, comforting him as he takes his last breath. But they need a couple days to get to the hospital. If the docs don't put this guy on life support, they're not gonna make it in time. So, what would this guy want? Would he want just to be left to die alone, naturally, according to his living will? Or do you think he would accept a short-term bout of life support in order to die with his family around him? This is one example of many about why a living well just sort of sucks. Uh, it can't possibly predict the exact way things are going to go down. It's so limited in scope. Even if you've got a serious diagnosis, even if you know what, uh, what you're dealing with, like stage 4 cancer, it's impossible to predict exactly how and when your illness is going to change the course of your future. And it's equally impossible to predict exactly what you're gonna want the doctors to do in that exact situation. And because of that, the living will just sort of falls on its face when rubber hits the road. Doctors just don't find it that helpful because real-time medical care is so nuanced and so context-dependent, a living will can't possibly keep up. You may be hearing that and thinking, oh, well, geez, like, all right, what do I do then? How do I maintain control over my health care? I would offer two alternatives to a living will. The first is the Durable Power of Attorney for Healthcare or a healthcare POA, Power of Attorney. 
A power of attorney document has a huge advantage over a living will in that you're appointing a person to make decisions for you. So rather than trying to predict exactly how the future is going to play out and tell the doctors what to do, you're saying, hey, here's a person that I trust to make decisions for me and do right by me and interpret my situation in real time. That, that is way more helpful than any singular piece of paper can, can really be for you. There's a second document that may be helpful for you, but it depends. If you are someone who would, you're very, very clear that you would never want life support or you never want CPR, chest compressions done to you under any circumstances, you should talk to your doctor about doing a POST form. Uh, it may be something different in your state, but it stands for a Practitioner Order for Life-Sustaining Treatment. It's a portable do not resuscitate form signed by your provider that says very clearly to not put you through life support or through chest compressions under any circumstances. It's not gonna be for everyone, don't get me wrong, but if that sounds appealing to you, if that sounds consistent with your wishes for the future, that's something I would talk to your doctor about. All right, well, I hope you found this helpful, and thank you for doing all that hard work out there, and thank you for watching.